Hi, welcome to today's Leaders in Mental Wellness and Diabetes, where you will hear insights from the top minds in the world of diabetes care, hosted by Dr. Shar. Hello, how are you, Janae? Hi, Dr. Shar, I'm great. How are you? I'm wonderful. It's so nice to meet you. So, so very good to have you on the podcast today. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate you reaching out. It was such a surprise, but I'm happy to be a part of this. Well, I'm I'm so happy to have you. The art is unbelievable. And I've just recently had the time to go look and shop. And oh my goodness, the cute little pink bags. It's just <laughs> and then the the what is it that has the the hypo vibe? What is that? The hypo vibe on the, the like with the face that's moving, is it? Oh, a, like a little gif, the little yes, animated. Yes, yes. I yeah. Love that. Yeah. Thank you. I you, got approached by Giphy to create those. So that was a great opportunity that I had. And that was a lot of fun. I created 10 different moving sticker gif things that everyone can use. And every person dealing with diabetes will smile and certainly understand, right? <laughs> I hope so. That's the goal. <laughs> so with that being said, tell us, tell us a little bit about this journey and how did you get to helping others with this business and what's the business like? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's all new to me. I'm figuring out along the way. I really, I mean, as an artist have been searching for my purpose for creating meaningful art. And I actually never really created art that was around diabetes until it, it was literally January, 2020. So it's kind of ironic, but that was like the first time I ever created a piece of art centered around diabetes. And it was because I was just like on my porch and just trying to, you know, I'm always thinking like, okay, what can resonate with other people? And then it just clicked. And I'm like, why am I not creating art about diabetes? Like that is my journey. That is my life experience. I don't know why I'm trying to find something else to connect with people when I have this. So it really, I don't know why it didn't make sense to me before, but it made sense to me then. So I started making art then and then I opened the stuff like the I started posting on Instagram and then I opened my Etsy shop officially in October of 2020. So since then it's just been creating more and more art and releasing little things here and there on the shop and just trying to grow following following and resonate with more and more people. It's it's amazing. Now it appears to me, I'm not a pro at this, but it appears to me that if you've just been doing that since October of 2020, you are really reaching far. And that's what we want to do it for. Of course, of course, if it's a career, we want to make a living. But if it's touching people's lives, just that like that brought a smile to my face, that little tiny, little smiley face that looked like it was having a little blood sugar. I love yeah. it. <laughs> I know that's how I feel. I feel like I'm like, everything's a blur and like totally out of it. So I was like, that's exactly how I feel when I am having a hypo. <laughs> so I know other people have to feel that way too. Yeah. So. I was on a street in a little town just a few months back and my husband of 48 years, that's dealt with diabetes, almost every bit of that mm -hmm. with me. And he wanted to get me candy because I was getting having a low. And I had just found these all natural honey pops and oh. we put them in the car. And I didn't want to eat processed sugar. I wanted that real honey, mm -hmm. like a, like a lollipop. Mm -hmm. And he went through the rain, went to the car and got me what I wanted. Aww. And I didn't even know to appreciate it. I was low and just kind of out of well, it. <laughs> when you're in the moment, yeah, it's really hard, but I totally get that. One of my best support systems is my partner as well, which I didn't, I mean, I just, we've been together for almost five years in November, but before that, I really did not have, even my parents weren't really a support system since I actually... I mean, we can get into this more, but I was diagnosed with type one actually when I was 18. My diagnosis has since changed, but being diagnosed like my first year in college by myself, I really didn't have anybody at all. So <laughs> it was a lot of loneliness and just denial and trying to figure it out and just like going day by day and just doing what you got to do, I guess. I'm pretty good at 
disassociating, unfortunately. So in a way, it's actually helped me to survive a lot because I was able to separate my tasks of diabetes with like my feelings. So I think that helped a lot. But um, back to the support system, I am. it's definitely been a life changer to have him. Not that you need a partner, but for me in my journey at that time, I think it helped being alone you know, for a while to figure it out myself and learn a lot of it, a lot of different things. But then it went full circle to now have that support and be able to, you know, I know I would be able to do it without him, which is good to know, but it definitely helps a lot in different ways you wouldn't expect. So well, we're not about me in this. I can make anything about me, but <laughs> so good. I, so <laughs> I'm a talker. This, this is so about you today, but what <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you someday as we get more acquainted, but I was in Germany and I was 16 years old and married oh, wow. wow. and was diagnosed. So I didn't know if he would stay. I didn't know. I mean, it was a journey. I was away from my parents. I was a little girl wow. that thought she was all grown up. Mm -hmm. And so, so I understand that feeling of being alone, but from that day to this, what about your emotions? How have you, of course, I'm all about the emotions. Mm -hmm. How are you personally adjusting those to encircle yeah. all of the physical stuff? Yeah, well, emotions are everything, right? They're a part of being human in every second of life, I feel like, and understanding emotions and being emotionally intelligent is everything. And that's something I've Definitely learned along the way. I've always been an emotional person, but I might not have realized it. And it's something I've definitely had to navigate and realize. I would say my biggest <laughs> struggle, I know I create really like joyous, like happy art, but I am like kind of an angsty person <laughs> at heart. So when I am like high, I am not the greatest to be around sometimes. And that has definitely been a big part of my journey is regulating that, like being able to check myself and like navigate that irritability is real. And it's definitely one of my biggest challenges, just even in the workplace, like everything. I mean, I haven't had a lot of situations. I mean, I don't necessarily think I show it outwards, but I feel it inwards. So that is something, I mean, I'm constantly working on every day, every high, I have to relearn and reteach myself, which I think a lot of people experience with all different types of things. It's just a part of being human is relearning again and again and again, reteaching yourself again and again and again. It's the challenge of being alive. So <laughs> beyond diabetes, but specifically with that, I would say that's been my biggest challenge is just regulating those emotions. I'm not going to say I'm an expert at it at all, but I've definitely learned a lot of different practices now that help. Just awareness, one, is huge. I've done counseling for just, you know, life and other things, and I'd say that also has helped um, me, like, just be mindful. But also, like I said, I disassociate a lot as well, so doing that counseling really helped me to realize that and become way more in the present moment than I had in the past, just in general. But I think it does help with diabetes. Well, for me, of course, I'm going to believe that every patient of diabetes needs counseling. Of <laughs> course, I believe that. And someone asked me, even if they don't know they're having problems right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. And here's what Here's what I have learned in my 150 years of doing this. <laughs> I have learned in so many ways that when we have mood ups and downs mm -hmm. because of the blood sugar being up or down, mm -hmm. and it's an extra thing than someone dealing with normal, regular ups and downs. We I have know. that in addition so I, I enjoy and think a lot of my time is spent hopefully helping people, but acknowledging those things. Okay, so while it was in this, I, I can speak from experience. While it was low, I, get, I think I get more irritable when it's low and coming up. Maybe mm. not, but when it's low or high and we get irritable, let's mm -hmm. say, and then when it's gone, 
it's our responsibility to not live in that emergency state. Well, now I've already made somebody mad at me that's helping me. You know, I've already been irritable. Yeah. And so it's, it's not the funnest thing to also turn around and change my mood because now I honestly went up or down, got out of a good mood into something else because of something out of my control. And yet it's within my control to take responsibility for that. And oh, sometimes I've even had to say, I'm sorry. And sometimes I, um, I, sometimes the victim in me wants to say, well, I couldn't help it, you know, mm -hmm. but as long as I can get out of it quickly, or when I know mm -hmm. it no longer is an emergency. And so dealing with that with patients who's never had uh, to deal with diabetes or who's never had counseling, I don't know where they learn that unless they have a buddy system of other people or maybe the educator. The educator didn't teach me that, you know? Mm -hmm. So those are the things that I, I love to deal with. In counseling, is that some of the things you had dealt with your emotions of how to how to be the boss of them? Not entirely. I mean, honestly, most of it was just being like bringing the awareness. I mean, I wouldn't, like it was more, I had just like a lot of disassociation in general, not specifically with diabetes, just in, I see. like from past trauma and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think it just, the tools I learned with that kind of bled into like how I can start to deal with the highs and lows of like diabetes, like that emotion aspect. But like I said, I'm definitely not an expert with that. I have not mastered by any means. I still have to like use it. I mean, I'm, I feel bad, but sometimes I have to apologize to my partner because I just am like, <laughs> like on edge so oh, yeah but, but that's what grace is for that's what <laughs> that's what mercy is for we take advantage of it right yeah. but to think that you would give coloring pages to I mean that has to help I mean is that in any way re related to moods that how did you come up with that idea to give that to people I mean I just want to with my work, I mean, I know that my stuff is not the cheapest thing out on the market, but you know, with that, I'm like a professionally trained artist. I'm actually like a designer by day. I like went to college for art and I know like my value. So I want to have a certain level of value with my work, but I also at the same time really want to make things affordable and like available to anybody. So they don't have to have the money to buy the actual thing they can make take my like bones and build off of that and create something for themselves. So I really just, you know, with the pandemic at the start of COVID, people are at home, people are just trying to, you know, bring a little bright light to their day. And I thought that that would be something free that I could offer. And it's basically, I mean, almost already done. I had to do a little bit of extra work to provide that, but I mean, I'm already creating the illustrations. So it was something I just, like to be able to do that. I mean, and I also sometimes I'll meet someone in person or someone will send me a message and I've like sent stickers out to people. So I, you know, I really just try to do those little things here and there to like brighten people's day. Well, that, that is, it feels like it's some wisdom beyond your years to understand that you are, you have such value and people pay for what they respect and value. And of course you're deserving of that. And then to understand that and then the complete other side to want to give back to those that can't, because there's always someone that needs that's less fortunate than we. So that is my hats off to you. That is wonderful. Thanks. That that's flattering. Wonderful. That I really great. that feels I, emotional doesn't it I mean that's wonderful thank you for being that insightful oh thank you I really appreciate that I mean I'm just trying to do I'm along with just being more aware I also just try to listen to my heart and my gut and you know I try to do those things when I feel inclined to you know like if someone is like I really wanted to buy something but I can't afford it 
you know, or something like that, you know, I'm always trying to work something out or give them access or show them like add more things to the freebie page. But I mean, ultimately with Die Babe Life, the goal is to figure out some sort of structure, a way to give back or some sort of more to the community. I'm always going to be looking for some way to give more to the community. So, I mean, I would like to just continue to do more and more of that. Either it's like a certain percentage goes to like a donations. I just need to really be mindful and figure out who exactly I'd want to direct those donations to and do that research. So I think it all really is about taking the right time um, to create the right plan that works for me and my business. But yeah, it's all part of the big picture of that. That's awesome. But now um, we can, of course, we have to have an abundance to give an abundance. <laughs> and that's yeah. been, you know, it's not hard for some of us to out give what we have. And while yeah. that's helpful to our emotions and we feel good about it, we also have to have that other piece of you that understands our value. Very true. Because you can't give in abundance if you don't have an abundance. And so while you're wanting that feel good and mm -hmm. that helping others, you also have to be a good business person in the, in the process. So how about that segue to this? <laughs> mm -hmm. How are you growing your business? What are you, what do you do to get those followers that, what do you do? Do you set up at night? Do you strategize? Do you have a team <laughs> or do you just, what do you do? <laughs> Honestly, I wish I could say that. I will actually say social media is exhausting for me. So one of my biggest challenges, honestly, is, and I'm still figuring it out, is a balance that works for me and the algorithm, <laughs> because the algorithm is real, and it's so hard to not be completely on all the time and be able to get the algorithm to work in your favor as far as, like, reaching more people organically or like, you know, on there. So that's been a really big struggle for me. I don't really have a plan. I would say the biggest benefits that I've seen is partnering with other people in the community. That is how I've gotten those unique followers. Sometimes you'll even see that one person who has way more followers than me shared something on their stories and I get seven new followers in like an hour. So, I mean, and then I'll go weeks and weeks and like, I'll get, I'll get regular followers every day, but then people unfollow me too all the time. So it, it's just like kind of evens out. So I'll go like months without really getting many new followers. So I really don't have a plan. I would like to create more of a plan, honestly. Um, at this point, I also want to just focus on creating the art. So, because that's my personal outlet, that's why I did it. I like to do that. And so I don't want that to ever get out of sight is just being creative and allow myself to be creative and not really worry about the likes or the follows and just hope that people <laughs> appreciate the art for what it is. You can't really get focused on it and you can't forget about it. Right. And I'm like, I can't even spell algorithm. And yeah. I, they didn't teach me that when I went to school. But my, but my point is, it's so important. And mm -hmm. if you don't know how, you don't know how. And then those that know how, don't really know how they just got a million <laughs> hits on one short video. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a crazy world that mm -hmm. we're navigating here. So it's interesting to me, to say the least. Yeah. But, uh, if we're gonna if we're gonna do something good on this online space that is so available to us now, we have to keep learning, right? Yeah. You have yep. to keep learning. I'm learning every day of new things. I'm also just trying to think of the kind of product that I want to have, the space I want to take up, like what I want that to look like. That's really more so my priority rather than posting the 10 stories a day and then <laughs> three reels a week or whatever the like thing is honestly I've tried and I'm sure my followers can tell you like I will like just I'll do it and I'll do it great for like a week and then <laughs> I will like disappear for like a month because I literally can't bring myself to do it again so I need to like I said find that balance that's right for me where I might not hit like the algorithm standards 
but it's something that can just be a little bit more realistic and manageable for me. Well, do you know the thing that I'm hearing in you that is so good? I hear the word balance. I hear that in every walk, every area that you've just these few moments. And that's so good because what we have dealt with in diabetes is that lack of balance. We've always had that as our enemy of fighting to keep this balance mm -hmm. and you've not one time mentioned about oh how I hate balance I've had to do it since I was 18 years old and you have talked about I need balance in this way I'm finding balance over here I'm looking for balance there and so you've made it work uh, for you how in the world that's so ironic honestly it kind of gave me goosebumps that you said that because that is something that people have always like even my family like brought up like how they admired just my lifestyle balance I've always had a balance of work and fun like in college I was wild but I graduated with honors and like I still like you know attended all my classes did all my homework like worked harder than anyone I knew so it's but I also like partied every single week so <laughs> it's like and people were like I can't like you have literally exactly what you should be doing during this time and I would say I continue to do that now with you know I have my day job I work I do the things that can like give the lifestyle that I need and that I want and then also like allow me to invest in die babe life but then I again I have die babe life to really even out that creativity outlet as well so yeah that's pretty cool that you recognize that I didn't even really <laughs> it's pretty fascinating <laughs> because diabetes is uh in itself mm -hmm. uh, it's a word before you get to die, babe. I'm telling you, right? Yeah. It's just a, it, 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 it comes from nowhere, it seems. It comes as a shock, as a surprise. And it's everything but balance. We're just kind of literally doing this to get <laughs> Weevil balance. wobbling around. Yeah, until we get balance and yeah. uh, until we learn enough mm -hmm. to, to get in that space. So, mm -hmm. wow, that's, that is real fascinating. Tell me, when you were 18 already in college by yourself yeah yeah six months tell, in tell me your reaction I know we talked a little bit about it already but tell me your reaction you're already going to school for art right you mm -hmm. said it never dawned on you nobody ever talked to you about you never saw art for patients with who would have thought but at 18 years old that you could have said oh I'll do art for adults that they can color and work with their emotions and and deal with their mood swings that they can't that they realize they can't carry on to other people mm. and and find balance in all their lives you didn't know that you had no way of knowing that and I'm just guessing but I think that's probably accurate how how did you react to that diagnosis when you were an up-and-coming artist you knew create creativity was in your bones and then you get diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you reacted to that. Yeah, honestly, not great, but not really much of anything either. I mean, again, that disassociation was real. And I really just kind of like a lot of my life, I just kind of power through <laughs> and don't really digest it or let it affect me I mean I didn't one didn't have anyone to talk to so that made it easy so then I didn't have to talk about it you know but honestly that was I, I did I do remember I have this like a uh, sketchbook at the time where I would sketch some things and some were pretty disturbing the things that I was going through and that's honestly like how I got out my immediate emotion but it kind of eventually just got a little bit easy. So that, that alone is huge. I don't think anybody listening would have to be an artist at heart mm -hmm. to know when, hey, we could wear a mask long before there was a pandemic. We would just hide it all inside ourselves and, mm -hmm. and try our best to pretend like it wasn't going on because who wanted to hear it anyway, right? That's what we thought. So you literally then would get out a pen or some kind of yeah something and, and, and write and color and 
withdrawal and yeah. you got it out of sight of you and yeah. until you started seeing success and that is amazing so what guidance what advice what i hate those two words when mm -hmm. it comes to because again that's another thing with we patients of diabetes we don't much like to get all the advice everybody tells us what mm -hmm. we should be eating what we shouldn't be eating <laughs> should you be get eating that what right. i'm gonna invite you out to dinner and the whole room looks at you when they say well where can we go well what can you eat dr shar i'm like <laughs> gosh i can't I know. food <laughs> table right here so so what if it's advice if it's guidance if it's just a word of encouragement what is your best give to somebody that is being diagnosed today yeah, I mean, from my personal experience, it would literally just be to express yourself in one way or another. I mean, everyone's an individual, everyone has their own specific situations, but it could be, you know, talking to somebody like a close friend or a stranger. Sometimes it's honestly easier to talk to someone you don't know. That's really big. But I mean, I think it's just about expressing yourself in any way that you're able to do and get those emotions out. I mean, obviously for me, it was like my sketchbook so i did a self-portrait that's what i remember doing around that time was getting that self-portrait out of like what i felt and what i saw when i looked in the mirror and like what i was dealing with and you know it's painful but it's just like any energy kind of like you just need to like have that release and then eventually it'll get a little bit easier so that's the biggest advice i could probably give well, like a good artist, of <laughs> course, get it out with drawing or writing and anyone can though, really. I mean, and I think that's something that a lot of people put so much pressure on themselves with art. I mean, it doesn't even have to be to show anyone. No one has to see it, but everyone is creative. It's not like certain people are creative and certain people aren't. Everyone has that innate ability and I do believe that when you're in that form of creativity you're like at some level of like energy like where it's just flowing and it's just it's healing maybe be. going maybe going under that level of awareness that's consciousness into our subconscious which is 90 to it's like from 10 to 90% of us, mm -hmm. and that's where it can take us to. So anybody listening, where, where would they go if they just wanted to get for the first time uh, a piece of art that they could just color? And then there's, there's the looking around and the shopping, and of course, we encourage mm -hmm. that. But where, where would they go find all that? Yeah, if you're on my um, Instagram, I just have the link. It's the one single link in my little bio at the top and it has a link to everything but I have one that's specifically called freebies and you can go there and download or go there and download I have I think four or five different art pages that are basically interpretations of like my portraits and stuff that I've done but yeah people are more than welcome to do that it can get a little confusing because you have to put in like a dollar amount but you can literally put in zero and download it for free. You don't have to pay me. Of course, I love the donations because some people have done that, which I've actually been pleasantly surprised. I did not expect people to do that. So, I mean, the community is awesome. Everyone surprises me every day. So not that people have to feel obligated to do that, but totally do it for free as well. That is so good. Now, that is my clinical, I want to help others push. <laughs> But when they get in there, there's the cutest little things from toboggans to there's just so much. I mean, you think art when you mm -hmm. go through all of that, but there's the cutest little bags to put our diabetes supplies. And mm -hmm. I don't know about anybody else, but I like cute bags for my stuff. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I mean, I've had to carry around in a paper sack i mean i yeah. just you know, there's cute bags now out there for us to use so one more thing mm -hmm. and then i will cut you free here today but what is a self-care strategy your perspective is from creativity and i love that you recognize we might not all be as talented as you mm -hmm. we might not all be as trained as you but we all can express ourselves and not hide behind the mask of 
of of the world that might not understand our feelings mm -hmm. and keep them inside but we can express them get them out i love that but besides that mm -hmm. uh, do you have a self-care something that a strategy that you use that you might want to share that's easy to do mm -hmm. and let me give you an example of mine so that you know what i mean if yeah. i can get to a restaurant and set my little butt down mm -hmm. and say to them before any food is passed around, don't bring bread to the table. I'm saved. I have rye crackers in my purse always with me. So I'm saved right there. It's a, it's a strategy that's been a life giving change for me. Mm -hmm. Right. But as sure as I don't tell them and that bread comes and there it sits and I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> that's so smart. still to this day, still to this day, I have to watch it. So that's one yeah. self-care easy strategy for me. And it really is real. Do you have any that you could mm -hmm. share with people that they might not think of that might resonate well? Oh my gosh. Honestly, that's such a great question. And I wish I had something unique, but I really don't. I don't have anything as brilliant as that. <laughs> that sounds so silly, but like that's actually really smart to do. And like proactive thinking. I mean, really. I getting in nature and getting some sort of physical activity is just literally my saving grace. Like actually getting outside and hiking um, and kayaking are some things that I've picked up in the past couple of years and that my body, I mean, I could, I would think a lot of people's body needs movement to help with their diabetes, but mine really, really, really responds to that. Just not only get lowering it, but also to keep it low. If I'm physically active, I don't get as many highs. So that is just my core. I mean, and then also the just stereotypical, you know, <laughs> baths and, you know, meditation and stuff like that is what I do, but I don't have anything unique. <laughs> But that is perfect. One thing you have beside you that is so good that we don't, all of us aren't prone to want to drink all the water a day. Mm -hmm. And you have sat there beside you water for the whole time. That is a great encourager for people who might hate water or they don't follow the doctor's instructions. Because anybody, mm -hmm. any you don't go see a doctor that the nutrition a specialist doesn't say, are you drinking mm -hmm. all your water? Yeah. And if you don't, you're like, <laughs> and uh, so here you sat, here you are giving us brilliance of creativity and excitement on how to build a balance with all that in a world where it could be, we could be Debbie Downers. We could take on that role and we have to talk into this screen as if somebody is in that place. And if we mm -hmm. just help one person. So I don't think there's a unique piece that's brilliant that somebody's not already thought of. Oh, yeah. I'd to get rich on one of those. <laughs> but I think those simple strategies of get moving, mm -hmm. get to moving mm -hmm. and that water bottle beside you hey yeah. and the then moment you yeah the moment I mean you stop moving you start dying is like what my boyfriend always says and I really do believe that I mean even based on his his grandma she is like almost 100 and she is always up on her feet and she's like riding she rides her bike everywhere she is super fit and you know she's always you know, moving around. And so I look at that example and I'm like, that is so true. The moment you stop and, you know, I have, I'm not, and I'm not a pro with that either. I love a good Netflix show, especially while I'm creating art, but that's so true. And you did, I mean, I do, I suffer with dehydration really badly. I don't know if that's, I know that's more inclined to people with diabetes, but I've had some really bad episodes actually over the past like year. I had to go, there's a place called, I can't hydrate me, where you can go and pay and get an IV. And I had to do that because I almost like passed out after kayaking once and I didn't know what it was. And then I realized, I thought it was just overheating, but I was severely dehydrated and I definitely struggle with that. So in addition to just having, I mean, this water bottle is, literally huge it's I just refilled it <laughs> like it's not the actual water that was in there before but I do not sponsored at all but something that I find helps me drink water is element and it's l-m-n-t 
it's like a newer electrolyte thing. And I'm pretty sure there's a way you can on their site that you can get like free samples, pay the shipping. I think it's like five bucks and you can get like seven free samples and they have different flavors and it's a little different than the normal electrolyte mix. It has like salt in it and it's designed for people in keto kind of diets, like low carb diets. And there's a lot of science behind the salt aspect of it, but they have really good flavors. And that is what helps me to drink a lot of water as well as having sometimes I'll literally, if you know what Camelback is, it's mm -hmm. those, it's a lot of, if you go to like an outdoor store, there's backpacks that have these huge, actually, I think I have, this is empty because I drank it all. But it's like this pack oh. that you can put in, it like slide, like this thing slides off and this slides into, it's empty, but it slides into the back of your backpack and then it has this little thing and this holds up to two liters. So oh. sometimes I'll literally just not have it in my backpack, fill it up with the two liters and have it by my desk and just drink that all day. And that helps stay hydrated as well. So... <laughs> So I'm guessing that water bottle was not a prop, but it worked perfect <laughs> it was not. To, to, to say to someone, here's something yeah. I can do, and this is what helps me. And you've, yeah. you've gone past the, just the need to drink a certain amount of water. You've learned that hydration is very valuable because sometimes we as patients dealing with diabetes, mm -hmm. unless it hurts, we don't want to, we don't want to fix it. Yeah. And so other things chronic make us want to fix it right away. And so the wisdom, uh, the wisdom that you have, the balance that you look for, the products that you're selling, the creativity that will have people running after you that says, I want some of that. Let me, let me feel that around you. And then let me go get some of those products and win-win. It helps everybody. It helps you. It helps them. Hey, awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Yeah, you too. I really appreciate it. It was a great conversation. I wish, I wish I knew where, and, and you certainly don't need to tell me where you're at, but I wish I knew where you were and where to go uh -huh. hike with you. And, and if I get far enough away from you, I'd have to get my butt back home, right? If I get, <laughs> I am a nowhere fancy at all. I'm in Columbus, Ohio. So oh. the capital of Ohio. <laughs> so not that exciting, oh, but... but I am in Nashville. And let me tell oh. you this one little personal tidbit. Mm -hmm. I have one son. He's 40 years old. Mm -hmm. I got him at McDonald's. I, we say we went, my last name is Fry. Sharp yeah. eye. And I say that we drove to the drive through and said, I'll take one Josh Fry to go. Oh, and he's 40 years old and he was born in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, wow. What he, was, he was 22 days old. Wow. And when I picked him up at McDonald's, did and you literally? So, oh, him? yes, ma'am. I picked wow. him up at McDonald's. I told you I'm an older and dirt. No, that's it's nothing not to do way, with that. But it's that's not crazy. the story today how it happens. But in a private adoption, yeah. yes, ma'am, I picked him up at McDonald's, and my nephew started that saying, and we've always carried it on. I drove through, I drove up to the drive-through and said, "I'll take one Josh Fry." That's go. so cute. But anyway, that that's was amazing. Columbus, Ohio. I'm in Nashville now with him. Uh, oh. This is where he calls home, and so we got to a certain point in our lives, and my husband and I. Drove everything we had to Nashville, Tennessee to be Aww. with that boy. <laughs> That's so sweet. My, um, I have a lot of adoption in my family too. So it's amazing to hear a great adoption story. So, well, you must know that Columbus, Ohio ranks as one of the top places on the planet for me. Hmm. It made me a mama. Mm -hmm. Made awesome. me a mama. Thank you so much. I told yeah. you I could make everything about me. We ended on me, not you. <laughs> oh, stop. That's funny. <laughs> it's nice meeting you. Let's yeah. not let this be our last time we meet. And I'm going to go shop at your uh, store. <laughs> and I hope everybody that has listened and will do the same. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It was Thank great you. meeting you and talking with you. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.